Recapping the action in MLS Week 15, including a big winner in the opener of Stad Saputo, next on The Daily. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Greg Lalas. I'm Nick Fershaw, back from Montreal. We're going to get to that in a second, but let's start with the action from Sunday. The Chicago Fire with a big 3-1 win over the New York Red Bulls. Patrick Nyaka with a goal and an assist in this one for Chicago. And Chris Rolfe also gets his first goal coming back to the Fire. Well, I think the Chicago Fire fans and coaches and everyone involved in the club will be very happy with what they saw from Chris Rolfe. He brought a lot of energy. He turned this team into just a very attacking team, and he got a goal. The fans uh, celebrated it, and the game was Scarf, uh, the guys in Section 8, very happy to see this second debut from Roll. Also in action on Sunday, the LA Galaxy and the Portland Timbers. The Galaxy get a goal from Todd Donovan. That snaps a seven-game winless streak, something I don't think a lot of people thought was going to happen in the Galaxy this season. But this one, if they get started here in the second half of the season, the All-Star break the summer, this might kickstart. Well, I think you have to put it in a little bit of perspective. The Portland Timbers are right now in last place in the Western Conference. So if that's what's kicking off your comeback, I mean, if that's what it takes, fine, that's what it takes. But the Galaxy after this one saying, look, we did some things a lot better than we have in the past. Obviously, this two-week break maybe helped. And Bruce Arena came out and said, are we like last year? Is this like 2011? No, because we still don't have the points and the results from it. But it did show some progress. And I think the biggest progress, Josh Saunders was back. This was the first shutout for the Galaxy all season long, and he made two phenomenal saves in the first half to keep them in this. Two big steps forward for the Chicago Fire and the LA Galaxy from Sunday. Make sure you log on to MLSsoccer.com. You can catch the complete standings from over the weekend. Next up, the debuts for two new MLS coaches. Let's start with John Hackworth, the interim head coach for the Philadelphia Union, who takes over for the club. They were up against DC United, a 1-0 loss in this one on Saturday out at PPL Park. Any changes that we noticed uh, for the new Union? Well, I think that Jack McInerney starting up top. That was interesting right off the bat. Amovia Kugo starting at center back alongside uh, Carlos Valdez. This is an interesting one. Okugo has the athleticism and the talent on the ball, I think, maybe to be a really good center back. We haven't really seen that much of him at a position like that. So that was an interesting move from Hackworth. A change there, but still the same result. A loss to DC United. Uh, Toronto FC all deb also debuting Paul Mariner, the brand new head coach of the Reds. A similar result in this one, a 2-0 loss on the road at Sporting Kansas City. What do we make of TFC? Well, right away we were talking about all along, would they go to a 4-4-2? And they did. Uh, Paul Mariner putting out a 4-4-2 with Torsten Frings in the midfield. We've seen him sometimes play at center back when they were under Aaron Vinter, but put him up into the midfield. I think this is a Toronto team that's still going to take some time to gel, to shift the system so uh, immediately after Mariner takes over. That takes some time for that to come back. Certainly a tough challenge for both of these two teams at the, as they sit at the bottom of the Eastern Conference, but potentially maybe a new era in Philadelphia and Toronto. Well, last but certainly not least, Greg and I are back from Montreal. We were there for the Stade Saputo opening, a nice uh, new facility for MLS. The Impact christened it in style with a 4-1 win over the Seattle Sounders. On the field, Greg, the Impact ran roughshod over the Sounders. What do we make of the ambiance and the uh, atmosphere up there at Saputo? Well, I thought it was great. The ultras from the Impact uh, fan group were fantastic at the end. They were making all kinds of noise. They had a terrific march to the stadium, and people just wanted to be there. There was a buzz in that stadium, and it wasn't just the ultras. That was what was interesting is that when they started a chant, everybody got in. That Ale Ale Montreal Montreal, everybody joined into that. So there was a great buzz. And you know what? The team repaid that. They called them their 12th player, and they certainly repaid that. When you think about some of the performances, Patrice Bernier, a yeah. local guy, coming through with a fantastic game, three assists on the day. Make sure you check out MLSsoccer.com. You can find complete uh, highlights from the match as well as a, a lot of coverage from that opener. It really was a good one up there at Stad Saputo. Uh, make sure also on Monday you can check out the latest edition of Extra Time Radio, the podcast coming out on iTunes and Buzzsprout. And Greg, this marks the beginning of numerology week on MLSsoccer.com. <laughs> what are we getting into? Well, this is all about stats and numbers and whether they apply to soccer or whether they don't. There's lots of debate about all of this. And we take a look at a lot of the numer numbers and numerology and all of that around MLS. Look at some of the stats, look at how they break down, and uh, it, it'll be pretty interesting to see how it comes out. Well, numerology week uh, kicks off on Monday and runs throughout the week on MLSsoccer.com. Thank <laughs> you.